Endurance? Yes. I'm looking for my mother. <laughs> The hospital told me that she was buried, and then she said that you put her in a jar? This is about your life. The life you're supposed to have before all that mess happened. Oh my god! What happened to you? I have to be your daughter. I have to be. It is possible. You didn't raise her. I saw the people that did. They created a monster, oh, Lena. No. I don't believe you. You're not going to leave me again, are you? You're not my daughter. Don't say that. No, you're not. You did this to me! You did this! Welcome, Julian, to Horrible Imaginings. What's it like to continue the festival circuit and the successful festival run for Reborn and being here at Horrible Imaginings? Well, um, I really couldn't imagine anything more horrible. Um, <laughs> and, <Nice. laughs> uh, but no, it's fantastic because I just um, was at Macabro yes. in Mexico. And I was looking at my schedule and I thought, oh, you know, Horrible Imaginings is, um, you know, only a couple of miles north. <laughs> it's very true now you think about it that way yeah so I, I i thought this a good great opportunity to come and check out a festival that i was um not familiar with um and um uh, this is my first day here and uh, as soon as i arrived and i opened up the book and i read uh, the piece about reborn i uh, i was immediately impressed you know that uh, this is a smart festival you know and uh you know the the text really focused on the uh, you know the subtext of the film, and um, and that's what I was immediately taken with, and what I've seen today very much sort of uh, compounds that. Um, so the the one thing that I really did latch onto with this with the script were the characters, um, and the fact that there was there was some real drama going on here, um, and um, some real emotion, mm. um, and for me it's all about the subtext. You yeah. know, it's all about the underlying stuff. Um, and so I really connected with the story of the mother and daughter and just thought, wow, this is uh, unique, actually. With a film like Reborn, a lot of people have talked about it being Firestarter meets Carrie. Um, it's got a lot of homage to throwback horror. Talk about having Barbara Crampton as a part of this film and uh, Michael uh, uh, Pere as well, yeah. um, uh, Ray Don uh, Chong as well, with this, having these veteran actors balance a very young cast. Uh, yeah, well, when the project came to me, um, uh, you know, uh, in this case, I was very much a sort of a gun for hire. Um, and, um, you know, I kind of read the script and I thought, well, you know, this is very similar to Carrie and Firestarter. And, right. And it, 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 it felt it felt um, kind of nostalgic. Um, and I was aware that there was a sort of a nostalgic kind of vibe going on in the genre at the time. Um, as a sales agent, I repped uh, Beyond the Gates. Right, right. Um, and um, so I thought, well, you know, there's no, there's no use trying to hide the fact, um, you know, that, um, that this is a sort of a latter-day carry. Let's embrace that. Right. Um, and not only that, but, you know, be nostalgic about it and also even meta about it. You know, the, the, the story is set in Hollywood. Um, the lead character is an actress. Um, so I felt that I could take it in that direction. That was not the original direction of the, of the screenplay, um, but I thought it would be a very interesting direction to take it in. And then quite naturally um, to, uh, to cast characters, um, you know, who were sort of big in the, uh, you know, in the 80s right, and right. the early 90s and to sort of... Uh, really, um, y y you know, add to that sort of nostalgic and meta element. Kaylee Gilbert is your super-powered teen. Mm. Uh, can you talk about finding Kaylee Gilbert? Uh, Katie's audition was amazing. I mean, she literally sort of blew us away. But she has a very unusual look. Mm -hmm. She's sort of like Elsa Lancaster yes. in Pride of Frankenstein. Very appropriate, yeah. And my instincts, you know, were to go for the girl next door. Yeah. Um, um, to make it more real. But, but, but I went home and had a chat with my girlfriend, and, um, and she said, no, it's, it's Kelly. 
so I listened. <laughs> and, um, and we went in that direction. And actually, I, I think that, you know, in terms of me trying to find where I was at with the tone of the film is that ultimately it's a fable, mm. it's a fantasy, it's a, it's a fairy tale. Um, so I thought Tim Burton, and, and, and that she's sort of like this, this Tim Burton character come to life. Um, this was a, a huge challenge for me because um, the budget was quite low, um, the schedule was very tight, much tighter than I've worked with before. Um, when I first met the producers, they said 12 days. I said, that's impossible, 18, and I think we, we, we settled at 15. Uh, but the last film that I directed, we did it in 18 days with a couple more days afterwards for pickups, so 21 days. But, you know, that, that seems to be the way the business is going. There's films are making less money, so therefore um, they're being made with less money, and money is time, so you get less time to make your film. You're a warrior, my friend. <laughs> Welcome to Horrible Imaginings. Thank, Thank you so much, Julian. Thank you.